everybody. Hi, welcome, uh, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, so I'd just like to take a, a minute to welcome uh, our friend, my friend, Ryan McNaught. Um, I'm sure everybody must know who Ryan is, right? I don't know. I would hope that everyone knows who Ryan is. I'm not so sure, but... If you don't know Ryan, if you've been living under a rock and haven't been watching Lego Masters, uh, Ryan, you are... Are you the Southern Hemisphere's only certified professional? Yes, that's right. Your only My nearest yeah. colleague's in Singapore. Singapore. So five miles above the equator, so yeah. I can claim that by five miles. So you are the only Southern Indeed. Hemisphere certified yeah. professional. Before you were a certified professional, how did that come about? Yeah, so like everybody, I had lots of Lego when I was a kid. Yeah. So I got my first set when I was three. I was, wow. a little, I was a little. Do you remember? Blue, I was going to say. Yeah, I know it you're very about well. To tell us what it is. Yeah, yeah. It was a little blue boat, and it was just prior to when minifigs came about, right? So, yeah. sort of mid 1970s or thereabouts. Yeah. And my grandmother bought it for me, and it was uh, 29 cents. This little, <laughs> little blue boat. I wish Lego cost 29, 29 cents. cents yeah. I reckon. And uh, I remember. I wonder what it's worth now. Well, it's funny because a few years ago, um, about 10 years ago, I bought it. A mint in sealed box one, okay. and it was like sixty-five euros. Yeah, oh, so wow. quite a bit. Quite and a bit that was different. ten years ago. Yeah, so, so I imagine uh, it's probably doubled in value now. Maybe, maybe. At least. But, uh, Is it still mint in box? Or still did you mint build in it? sealed box. Yeah, right. yeah. So Are you ever going to build it? No, no, no. I built, I built another version of it. Yeah, using the same pieces, but not mint in sealed box. Yeah. So, uh, yep. So anyway, um, I loved Lego as a kid, up until I was about twelve or thirteen, and then it became uncool. A lot of people they enter their dark yeah. age, right? You know. So I uh, kept playing with Lego till then, and then um, basically Lego went in the cupboard. Yeah. You know, mum put it under the house, you know, got packed away, sort of thing. And then it wasn't until uh, some 20 odd years later, when we had kids, that um, my mum had kept my Lego and gave it back to me and said, yeah. now that you've got kids, you better give your Lego back. So of course, I imagined from when I was young that I had this massive Lego collection. I remember that, you know, just having so much yeah. Lego. But in reality, it was like a... Two ice cream containers. Yeah, it was pretty full. much, right? Yeah. So it was it was very much different. Yeah. And so I got those ice cream containers out and started trying to recreate all those sets. Yeah. And started putting them back together. Of course, the missing pieces, pieces were chewed. You know, the dog had eaten half of the Lego, whatever, right? So I found out about Bricklink and, and bought all the pieces that I needed to, to recreate those Lego sets. And kind of... That was kind of the gateway, if you like. That now, what if I make my own thing? Because when I was a kid, that's what I used to do, make my own stuff. And kind of got back into it then. And um, I was lucky enough to be on holidays in the US and found a Lego store. And of course, I don't have them in our neck of the woods, but um, they just released Cafe Corner. Oh, right? yeah. And so, I'm like, 2003 ish? Oh, a bit later than that. A bit later? Yeah. So, sort of 06, 07, maybe? Yeah, it could be, yeah. And um, I'm like, holy cow. Look at this, that's not made out of Lego, how amazing is that? And that kind of got me collecting and wanting to build again. Yeah. And so after sort of that, I was sort of making big and amazing things and some people said, oh, can you make that for us? Can you build that for us? And it kind of just grew and grew and grew and basically turned into a, a, a job as well as my normal daytime job. I'd work eight or 10 hours a day, then have to do Lego eight or 10 hours a day and then yeah. try and sleep eight or 10 hours and then raise kids for eight or 10 hours. And before you know it, something's going to give up. Still trying to fit 45 hours into a 24-hour Totally, hour day. totally. So um, basically, I, I went into my boss's office at the time and said, I'm sorry, but I'm quitting to go play Lego. <laughs> and so... Uh, what was your reaction to that? She wasn't very happy with me, I'll be yeah. honest. But um, I, uh, the day before, I had a meeting about the number of meetings we were having. So I knew that I was done. I knew that was, that was the end of me. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, so now you are literally a full-time Lego certified professional. It's your full-time job. It is, yep. You have a, a workshop based in Melbourne. Yep. You have a group of people that work with you. Yeah, we have eight yep. full-time staff eight full -time. that uh, work underneath me. Yep. Um, all different skill sets. They do all different things. Some are amazing technic builders. Some are amazing system builders. We've yep. a really good Duplo builder. So yeah, we kind of have all these different skills. Yeah. And um, so, when did you become an LCP? Well, so I, I was doing the whole Lego thing for a while before I got that title. Yeah. And basically, to get the actual title, Lego will approach you. Yes. So they kind of approach me. Yeah. And you become a trainee for a few years. Oh, yeah. So unofficial, they don't recognise you as anything. You're just yeah. like a trainee, and they sort of tick you off and put you through your paces. And so I officially became one after being a trainee for a few years in 2011. Okay. Yeah. So during that trainee phase of time do you get access to the 
to the parts ordering system like you do now? Not, not, not no. really. So back, you've just back, got to yeah, prove yourself. totally. Back in wow. those days, it was very different. Wow. Um, it's a little bit easier nowadays. Yeah. So sort of, it was harder. And back when I became one, there was only eleven of us. So I was yeah. number eleven. Yeah. And, and how so, many now? Uh, there's fourteen at the moment, awesome. plus a few trainees. Three more since two thousand. Yeah, we've lost a couple in on the way. So yeah. there's been a few that have come and gone. So. Yeah. So what are, what is it actually for, for for those of us that don't know? What does the LCP side of it actually mean? Does that mean that Lego uh, use you to build the large models for shop displays and things in this part of the world? Or? So there's there's two parts to it. So the first thing is in our part of the world, as you know, we're very geographically challenged, bottom, right? Yeah. So for us to away get, from everybody. totally to get shipped things and all of that kind of stuff so it's very difficult could be worse could be Perth right well this is true or Alice Springs or something yeah, like yeah. that so isn't uh, Perth the most remote city in the world it is yeah. by geography yeah, yeah by geography yeah so um, because we're so remote obviously it's very difficult to have big Lego models sent from Denmark for example sake you know that's three months on a ship to yeah. get down here and stuff yeah. like that so uh, not only that the models that I tend to make are very region specific you know, if there's like a Lego store in Wellington, for example's sake, yeah, we do well, something Wellington thing, right? right? Totally right. Yeah. So and you did the Auckland Sky Tower yeah, for Toyko. Totally, and um, things like that. So I'm just trying to think of something. You also did the rocket that's over there. Yeah. So we try and do things that are very local themed. Yeah. So that kind of makes us kind of unique in what we do, as opposed to this mass-produced thing made over in Denmark that everybody gets. You know. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you don't do the um, the big figures those sculpture figures they all get sent still from the factory no no we, we do those. but we do this the country specific ones. ones yep right so, so like the surf uh, and totally did you do the bubblegum guy for totally as well? yep that kind yep. of stuff so we do but you don't do like Garmadon for example no that'll come all the from, mass produced yeah. yeah and at Lego will make say 80 of those at a right. time and yeah, they'll get shipped around the ship world totally so we tend to do the one off or the two off type stuff right that's yeah. awesome yeah. so what's the process uh, for going through one of those big builds is it you know, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. Where do you start? Yeah, so someone the, comes to you with an idea. Well, we'll talk. I we'll, want this. Totally. We'll talk about uh, Toyko as an example, yeah. right? We did a big X wing for them. Yes. So the first thing is Martin. Actually. Martin, the owner of Toyko. Yes. So uh, we had a conversation. What are you after? What do you need? Um, and you know, we talk about the issues that he has. He doesn't have much room in his store. Very little floor space. Yeah. So that says, well, okay. Well, I suggested maybe we do something hanging from the roof. It's not going to take up any floor space. It's kind of cool. Yeah. He's got room to do it, that kind of stuff. So we basically work through a, a process, you know, a, a specifications and requirements process. And then I'll make some suggestions. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Um, then we basically get a budget and work backwards from a budget. These big models cost tens of thousands of dollars to build. Yeah. You know, the Lego bricks, the hours, the steel, all of that kind of stuff. And then we'll plan it out to within an inch of its life. And if it's licensed property, like the X-Wing, for example's sake, we need to get Disney approval, we have to speak to George Lucas, yeah. we have to do all of these kind of things. So basically, um, we go through that process, and then we'll actually get to have some fun and play Lego, which is kind of like the last part of the process. How cool is that? Could be my new job. I doubt it very much. I oh, already know. have a certified yeah, professional here. Uh, did you build the Buzz and the Woody and the Cinderella in Melbourne? Uh, I built the Cinderella, you so Cinderella. Cindy, yeah, life-size Cinderella. Right. And funny story, every model that we make has a behind-the-scenes story about it that people don't know about. Yeah. So Cinderella, I had to build three heads for Cinderella. They weren't happy with the first one, wasn't happy with the second one, and the third one, they were finally happy. So I actually have a couple of Cinderella's heads in boxes back in the workshop. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. Uh, yeah. One of the viewers says, loves your displays at Meyer in Melbourne. Oh, yeah, cool. um, <clears throat> thought they were there in February this year. The stadium near... <laughs> Like my, my fantastic viewer base. Yeah. <clears throat> the stadium needs a little tidying up. A few things have fallen over. <laughs> yeah, that's what maybe, happens when... Uh, maybe the beer sellers are too cheap. Yeah, a couple of the footy teams are yeah, a bit dodgy. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. Cool. Dear, dear, dear. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was that question there? I just missed it. Where did it go? No. Oh, scroll for crying out loud. There you go. Where is it? Uh, oh, that was the same one. Did, did the Cinderella. So, who did the buzz, the buzz and the Woody? So they were mass produced. They're actually made in the US. Now, is there a story about those particular models where they got recalled, and and that store that has them in Melbourne didn't send them back? Do you know anything about that? No, I don't know anything about that. No. Um, <laughs> what often happens is particular models, say Woody, for example, say. Yeah. So they made about 30 or 40 of those big life-size woody statues, and they get shipped all around the world. 
you know, toy stores in the Czech Republic or Russia or yeah. America or whatever. And often those toy stores, something might happen, might go broke or bankrupt or whatever, and some dude will come along and take the Lego model and yeah. they, they kind of end up changing hands and things like that. So Are they still all owned by Lego? Do technically, Lego they're all, the te Lego retain all the ownership on them, yeah. but uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to track down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, obviously, uh, before we get into the Lego Masters conversation, because that's going to come, yeah. um, tell us a bit about the... the exhibitions that you've put together and where you've traveled with those and how those have gone for you because i know that <coughs> we uh you came to wellington and you've done new zealand with uh brickman wonders of the world uh -huh. but that's not the only one you've done is, yeah. is that the only one you've brought to new zealand uh no for, so a couple one, of years before two that two years wasn't it yeah which was only in auckland yes um, that's right which was uh our first ever show so we have i actually have five traveling around the world the first one's called Brickman Experience. Well, the world. Yep. Wow. So that's currently in Chile, oh, nice. in South America. The Wonders of the World has just left New Zealand, and it's on its way to Saudi Arabia. Oh wow! Yep. Is, is this just your ultimate ploy to get to all of these countries to, you know, help them set up and make sure that everything? I'm in trouble with the nice ones like New Zealand. Yeah, I'm in yeah. trouble with the good ones. Oh, some of them I try and be avoid. What you yeah, say no, here. no, I try and avoid yeah. some of the countries. Yeah, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Obviously, having a young family, I can't be everywhere all the time to yeah. everyone. So. Do you have to send a team, though, to assemble yeah, them so on Yeah, so out of our team, there's always one or two of yeah. us will travel, depending on the show. So one is the world, it's a two-man job, two-person job. So two people from our team will travel to set it up, yeah. and then likewise to pack it up again after it's done. So, yeah, yeah our team are often travelling to amazing places. Yeah. yeah. And have you got a, a number six in, in the works? We actually do, yeah. It only just got announced a couple of days ago. Oh, really? So you're getting really? a bit of a scoop here. Wow. But uh, Jurassic World. Oh, really? Yeah, so we're oh. making life-size dinosaurs. Life-size? Life-size dinosaurs. For real? For real. Actual life-size? Actual life-size dinosaurs. Holy man. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Yep, that's gonna be. Um, we, uh, we're gonna break quite wow. a lot of records with some of the models we're making. Wow. Yep. Yep. Life size. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So, particular a couple of the big ones, the, um, yeah. the Indominus yeah. Rex and uh, T Rex. So they're gonna be huge. Yeah. Oh, do you, question. Do you have to use some extra wow. support for those kinds of models? Yeah. Great, great question. The question, in case you didn't hear, is if we have to use any extra support in our models. Yeah. Um, yes and no. So the primary concern that we have when we're designing a Lego model, the first and foremost is safety. So it's always about safety first and then other factors afterwards. We don't need to put things like steel and things in our Lego model. The models can self-support themselves. But if they're a contact model, like kids can go up and hug them or climb on them or whatever, they need to have that support in them. So often on the inside of the models, they'll have a steel frame or a chassis around them. Not needed, but for safety we do. Yeah. yeah. We actually have, um, over the years, we've developed with the LEGO company a manual about this thick about quality and safety standards. So as you can imagine, that's, you know, first and foremost about what we do. Yeah. It's not as simple as just going, hey, let's build this. Yeah, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know, I think about our biggest models. Like, we've made a couple of life-size cars yeah. out of LEGO, and they weigh two tonne, yeah. three tonnes each. Yeah. Right? So three tons of Lego, if that falls on someone, will kill them. Yeah. So we, you know, there's a lot of things like that that we like to think about. Yeah. So with the, let's say the T Rex for example, mm -hmm. um, have you got an idea of how many bricks that's going to take? Uh, look, there's there's a lot of things that determine a brick count, and it's re a really interesting discussion. People can go oh, size or volume, this kind of stuff. Color is a great example of that. As we know, not every brick comes in every color, yeah. and vice versa. So if the T-Rex is white, there's every piece comes in white. So I could use really long bricks. If we go in, say, dark orange, the biggest brick in dark orange is a two by four. So it's gonna have three or four times the mass and volume of if I made it, say, white, for example, sake, right? That's a really good point. So, so there's a lot of variables around that. And even the pose, if we have a plain old T-Rex looking like this, it's a fairly simplistic pose. If he's kind of going, ah, oh, you know, quite different. So there's a lot more uh, uh, a difficulty in, in that depending Getting on pose. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I never really thought about that, to be yeah. honest. Uh, uh, a great example of that, we did a big rocket ship. Um, the NASA SLS rocket that's going to take man to Mars. It's seven and a half meters high. It took about 600 hours to build, right? Yeah. But that was because it's dark orange, and at that time, the biggest dark orange brick was a one by four. 
right? And literally two months later, Lego released two by bricks in dark orange. <laughs> it would have saved us about 300 hours of build time. And 300 hours, when you think about it, is like two months work. So, so, can, so I'm, I'm picking that uh, you, you are able to order from Lego the, yes. the bulk bricks, yeah. but you can't order special part colors. No. It's just so whatever's on Whatever's the currently in production, and even if a part's recently retired, it's gone. It's still gone. It's gone. So, yeah, so as you can imagine, we have a pretty good inventory of Lego bricks. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, are you also stuck by if, a, let's say, a part is about to retire and you want 10,000 of them and there's only 3,000 left? That's it? Just 3,000? Yeah, so, so, so we actually work a little bit further ahead. So over the years, as you can imagine, we've built some pretty good contacts. Yeah. So I'll yeah, speak to, to. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to some people that I know and say what's happening, what's going to retire. Right. So every couple of months we'll have a conference call, what, what looks like dropping off, what doesn't look like dropping off, and let's get those orders in beforehand. So you must have a pretty big brick pit then. We do. Um, last count, bigger than the Lego Masters, much bigger than the Lego. Uh, last count, it was over ten million bricks. Wow! So yeah, wow. That's yeah. ten million available bricks. Yep. that you've got. Oh, and uh, I mean, that's over a long time. So some of those parts are not longer valid anymore, yeah, right. but we still have some. Because I guess you know all of the big models are all glue, right? Totally. And that's obviously a safety thing, and the fact that it needs to stay together to be transported. Uh-huh. So. It's not like you can buy five million bricks and go, oh, we'll build this and then we'll tear it down. And totally. It's all one-off use, right? Big time. Yeah. Yep, exactly right. Wow. And Murphy's law always dictates that the colour we need is the colour we don't have. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Isn't that the same for every builder, whether it's this big or this totally. big? Totally. There's a <laughs> law. There's a law. Yeah. I yeah. want to build this. Oh, well, back to Bricklink it is. Yeah, At least totally. you don't have to buy from Bricklink, right? Well, do, we, we actually do. Do, act, we do, do you really? Yeah, I was just going to say, do you actually buy I, from I don't, Bricklink? I don't know the numbers. Yeah. Obviously, Bricklink have their numbers, but we're a pretty big purchaser. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Particularly, like, if we have to repair an older model, for example's sake, it's an old grey or an old yeah. brown or whatever, the only place no I get it, yeah. no choice is Bricklink. So, so. What, what's your Bricklink name? Is it Ryan McNaught? Do you have, like, thousands of I, great I don't, feedback? I, I can't. I have some. Hopefully, I have good feedback. <laughs> You'd have, you'd have a fantastic Brickling store if you ever decided to well, open one. Well, that's my, my retirement, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll jump into the Lego Masters thing. So how was that experience? Well, so I'd, as far as television goes, I'd only ever done, you know, chat shows, a little bit of TV interviews, that kind of stuff. Never really the whole reality of television. Yeah. And so it comes as a bit of a shock to people, but we actually don't even have a TV aerial at home. Oh, really? Our house is a television-free house. <laughs> so I didn't really watch any TV or reality TV or anything like that. I'd only heard the negative about things like Married at First Sight and all these, like, Love Island and all yeah, these well, sorts of... You know, you know these genre. Th- yeah, and reality TV has a certain stigma about yeah. it, you know. Rightly or wrongly, I'm not for me to judge, but... Um, it has a certain negativity about it, and that's not really cool. And I certainly, that's why we don't watch, you know, TV at home with the kids. So when we sat down to, to work on the show, one of the things was all about, we've got to make it family friendly. Yeah. I remember as a kid watching TV with my parents, parents and we'd sit down as a family, as a, as a unit, and we'd watch something on television. And that was really cool, and we really loved it. Yeah. So it was about bringing that back. So that was our first and foremost overarching thing that we wanted to do, yeah. is bring television back to a family. Yeah, so that's sort I of guess a... with Lego itself, uh, it, it would have been very, very difficult to make it non-family friendly because it strays so far away from the brand values. Well, uh, yeah, look, there's, there's brand values. Lego themselves are an amazingly uh, restrictive company. Like, there are very strict rules about what we can and can't do. They are also extremely free. So as far as me as an artist, for example, sake, going on a television show, they will not tell me what to say or what to do or what, you know. They put their trust in me, even though I don't work for them, to know that I would do the right thing as far as brand values go, right? So there's no rule book that says I have to make it a family-friendly show. I don't have to if I don't want to. Okay. But I want to. Yeah. So that's kind of what makes it that easy part, if you like. It's not an unwritten rule. It's nothing. There's no pressure coming in to do that. So it's more about making something that's cool for everybody, you know? So that's kind of the overarching thing about it. And then, even if it is Lego, it's a reality show. Yeah. We could make it bitchy and catty and fighty and all that if we wanted to. You can easily, you can manipulate people to look and do whatever they want to do, right? But that's not what it's about. Yeah. 
so yeah. So was what you saw on the TV show a reasonably accurate representation of the contestants? Oh, look, I think so. Um, what it does do, however, is amplifies it. Because they're in this pressure cooker situation of 25 cameras, and that's what you never saw on the show, yeah. there's literally 20 cameras in the room, five sound guys, six producers, time pressure, do this, do this, I'm in their face, hey, where are you at? Hamish is telling them jokes. You know, the whole thing, there's this real pressure situation happening. And they, you know, they get on set at 7 o'clock in the morning, they will build, they'll have a lunch break, and then they'll build again, and then 7 o'clock at night, they'll go home, they'll be exhausted, they'll come back and do it again and again and again, right? So there's plenty of opportunity to, to leverage people into a situation if you wanted to do that, right? But it's not about that, so... What yeah. was the... Uh, do you have a, a funniest oops moment that you specifically did? Did you accidentally knock anything over or so, bump yeah. into a camera? Well, or? it's funny because Hamish... He's been, really tall, right? Totally tall. He's, he's, really like, tall. he's like I've, a foot and a half taller I've than me. I've spoken to right? Bilzey so, and he's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that six eight or something? No, oh, six, six five, I think. Six five. Yeah, it's well, yeah, he's that's, tall. that's tall, yeah. So anyway, um he's a big Lego fan, yeah. but not an AFOL. Like right. he loves Lego but doesn't make his own models yeah. or anything like that. So he's not familiar with where to pick up a model or how to hold a model <laughs> or what pieces are fragile or yeah. pieces are not fragile. So what if you So do very it? early in the piece it's like rule number six, never touch anyone else's Lego. Never, ever, ever touch anyone else's Lego. So things like that, for example, sake. But the funniest moment of the whole show where I made a bit of an oops, and I think they actually showed it on, on the TV, I'm not 100% sure. But basically they had to draw out of their hat a world, there was four worlds with the time train that was going around, and yeah. whether they had the future, or the medieval, or the dinosaur, or whatever. And David and G were so wanting to have medieval world. That was their, they loved building medieval. And lo and behold, they pull out the spaceman, and he dropped the F bomb, like oh, Fruit Loops, right? And I lost it. I, I was, I just lost it. I'd never laughed so hard in all my life. I lost it, and we had to do it again. We yeah. had to like cut it again, but I, I was crying for like ten minutes. Wow. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty That's funny. funny. Yeah, it's funny. What was the the biggest oops moment on the set from anybody? Um, there's a lot of dropped trays of Lego, a yeah. lot of shh, bricks out all over the floor and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, the DeLorean build that had a pretty, couple of pretty big oops moments in it, so that was yeah. that was quite funny too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're obviously you're going to be on Lego Masters season two. Yeah, so we're currently in a stage of uh, recruiting for new contestants. Yeah, yeah. So, so that. that's out at the moment. Apparently they've uh, closed it down to New Zealand this year, though. Uh, uh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, last year it was open to New Zealand, but this year it was closed to New Zealand. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure of the reasons why. Yeah, um, might that's be fine. a New Zealand-specific version. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, which would be interesting. Yeah. But um, So we're filming again in October. Oh, yeah, this yeah. year. Yeah. So how long did it take to actually film the whole season? Because I, I don't know if you're aware or not, but in Australia I know that you had three episodes a week over three weeks yep over here we had three episodes over three weeks and then two Doubles. over two yep. weeks and then a week and then two over two weeks again yeah okay it was really all over the place yeah okay well, i mean obviously but, every channel's gonna yeah, yeah dictate yeah, their what own they do. Thing but uh, clearly it takes longer than that so how long was the, the whole yeah so we started start filming thing? early october and we wrapped up two days before christmas oh wow really? so three months and um people often ask me they say like a 14 hour build or a 16 hour build so that's over a few days yeah we don't make them stay there all night and yeah. crack the whip you know none yeah. of that kind of stuff yeah, so that was, that was one of the commonest questions that Billsy got answered yeah. asked actually yeah so everyone got a break take? Yeah. no so, and um <laughs> and uh, every morning we come in and freshly washed and yeah. iron clothes the same <laughs> ones photos the whole yeah. continuity lark yeah. 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 yeah so, that was so um what i want to know is uh, who cleaned up all the lego at the end of it well, it's funny you should say that. So the brick pit had about two and a half million bricks in it, exactly, right? Yeah. And after each build, we reused all the bricks. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing about Lego, right? Yeah. So literally in the evening, as soon as the show was finished, after they got all their photos and judging and all of that kind of bits and pieces, a team of like 20 people would work all during the night <laughs> to pick it up, pack it away and sort it and put it all in their, wow. in their tubs. The, the, mag awesome. the magic of television. 
And I was told that it wasn't just the brick pit that you saw on TV that was available to them. Uh -huh. yep. That there was also containers full of Lego out. Yeah, this this. Well. I don't know if your your listeners and viewers have seen, but if they go to the Lego Masters Facebook channel and their videos, we actually filmed a lot of behind the scenes oh, really? videos. Yeah, yeah and we talk about that. the brick pit and how we sort and store Lego and all yep. that stuff. Yeah. And did you supply all of that Lego, or did uh, Lego most themselves of it, come? To most it? of it, I did. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, there's a lot of very conscious decisions about all those challenges. Yeah. So we did all the challenges. Yeah. So we designed and tested all of the challenges before the contestants. Right. And so we acted as contestants. Yeah. So we were very uh, mindful about how, what, where, and when bricks were available. Right. Very mindful. Ah, okay. So yeah. there was a lot of thought put in behind the scenes. A so lot of thought. Yeah. Months and months of thought. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right, well, uh, I think probably, probably other people want to talk to you as well. So oh, no worries, all good. Pleasure. Thanks so thanks much Dan. for, Absolutely for good your to time, see you Ryan. again too. No uh, yeah, you too. It was really well, good to catch up with you again. Uh, all the guests on the show oh, get a break. sweet. You have to appear on show to get one. Oh, do those. I really? Yeah. All right, well, let me first put on my badge. First 50 get one. This okay. colour, next 50 will be yellow. So oh, look, lavender's You're in uh, the first 50, Medium buddy. lavender's way cooler. Thanks. Indeed. Thanks, everybody. And, Thanks um, so much for coming along. And just uh, remember, with LEGO Master Series 2, hopefully everyone tunes in and keep me in a job. Uh, we will. We will be indeed. Just yeah. in saying that, actually, just to finish up, you're here as a just a fan this weekend, right? Totally, yeah. I've brought a couple of mocks along, and I know. Well, I saw you unpacking this morning your bricks. Yes, well, what was left <laughs> in my re mock? Rebuilding. Yes. Don't yeah. worry. Uh, I took a trailer load of Lego to Auckland once. That did not end well. I still yeah. get grief over that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, any how do, yeah? How does the show compare? What are the standouts for you at this one? Well, it's funny. Um, I mean, I've been to a few Christchurch brick shows. I think this is my fourth. Yeah. But I haven't been for a couple of years, yeah. so it's good to see some. Um, new faces and some fresh faces which is always yeah. amazing but uh this is a bit controversial here and i'll, I'll cause a bit of a, a a stir with it i often get asked which country has better lego builders australia or new zealand uh, i often get asked this a lot um and it's actually kiwi kids yeah um and for two reasons and quite scientific i actually find the kiwi kids have less lego and because they have less Lego, it actually means they're more resourceful they with what they do. Yeah, and the elements they have can, can work much better, as opposed to having a massive pile of Lego and always having what you need. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, always causes a bit of a stir, that one. Yeah. Always causes a bit of a stir. If you had to choose a standout display here, would you? Could you? Uh, Could you share anything um, here that you've just gone, oh, my God, that's amazing. There's a few. There's quite a few that I'm quite... Uh, amazed with. Yeah. Um, I don't know their names, so I, I better not you can get their names them. wrong. Well, um, I know Peter Denison's work. Big fan oh, of Peter yeah, Denison's amazing, work. Isn't he? Yeah, and uh, Nathan and um, Mark. Yeah, they're both amazing builders yes. as well. Very yes. big fans of them. And there's quite a few new builders that I don't I don't know their names that have come along. There's this really cool uh, Ninja in the Snow. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, a yeah. Japanese house down there. But there's a lot. There's a there's a lot. It's, it's, I have to. Say, I, you know, I'm no expert builder myself, but watching the New Zealand and Australian communities grow over the last five years has been amazing and particularly in New Zealand so this year I've been doing six or seven shows this year uh -huh. uh, and my goal now is literally this is all about community engagement and um, I want to try and share more of that with the world because we're so far away from like you said everyone geographically challenged that none of this stuff gets seen by the world. So oh, really? there's a, a huge uh, Death Star trench run over there that's built by a gentleman in my club. And uh, that got picked up and put on a news site in Germany. Yeah. And then that got blogged by all the big Lego places. Yeah, it's awesome. like, if we can get that stuff out there. Totally. Some people got to see what we can do down here. Cause well, the world's a small place. It is a small place with the internet. Yeah. It very much is. Just take someone and put it on the internet. It does. So, yeah. No, it's good. Enjoy your weekend. Oh, Glad thanks to very see much. you back over yeah, here. Yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, good to catch up with you again, as always. Yes. Uh, you're looking fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. You're doing marathon number... 10. 10. Yeah, in October. In October in Chicago. And it's funny, uh, Lego Masters 3 about that. So, uh, I've convinced Geordie from the TV show, Jordan. Yes. Uh, to run the Melbourne Marathon yes. on the 13th of October. He's never oh, wow. run more than five kilometres in his life. Oh, yeah. So he's running, uh, doing a running program at the moment. He's up to 10 kilometres yeah. and losing a lot Good of weight. Yeah, he's, he's doing an amazing job and, and he's going to run his first marathon. Good on him. So, uh, yeah, can't wait. i watching him on Instagram, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maps and stuff, so. He's a really good kid. And, yeah, um, yeah so... Hopefully. He did plenty of running during the show, didn't he? He did lots of running during the show. Yeah, is it? Uh, is it? He works for you now, right? He does some yeah. casual work for yeah, us. Yeah, so he comes in and helps out. Yeah. He's actually got a cool gig at the minute. This is yeah. quite a job. 
we've got dinosaur maybe uh, no 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 we've got maybe <laughs> a good couple of hundred thousand minifig parts and he's sorting our minifig parts at the moment yep good gig great gig <laughs> great gig so yeah I've actually <laughs> caught him I've caught him a few times going oh look hey Buzz what are you doing oh what are you doing <laughs> So it's like back to work, uh, dude. Do yeah. you blame him? Do you blame him? No, You'd of course be going not. slightly mad with totally. that, you know, like yeah. uh, mini pig parts. Yeah. Uh, yeah look, cool. I'm looking forward. When do you think we might see some sneak peeks of these dinos? Uh, well, we've only just sort of announced the project, yeah. so we'll probably start building in a few months. So nice. maybe Christmas we might start to see some teasers awesome. come out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you, because and you put them all on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, they'll all get put up on our uh, on our socials. So at Brickman. Brickman Exhibitions. Brickman Exhibitions. Yep, follow yep. us and um, yeah, see all the goodies. Excellent. Pleasure. Right. Now for the third time, okay. we really do no, need to no, wrap no. it up this Stick time. Stick on, mate. Because I'll on. just keep on talking. No, thanks, thanks so much, Cheers, man. Mate. See Appreciate you. it. Cheers.